Hello everyone, we are live and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I'm joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice now commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Ah, I'm going to say I apologize for my uh, absence last week. And I apologize for this week if I sound a little bit congested. I was sick last week, I know. I know. I should have just came in anyway. But, um, you know, I don't want to spread it to these guys because... Uh, these guys deserve better than that. So we are here this week and we're going to be talking uh, talking some stuff, talking to ukulele. And this is how this works. We get questions all the time over on our website, ukuleleunderground.com, through emails, through all sorts of, uh, you know, all sorts of places. We try to answer them to our best abilities here at this show, Thursday Live Lesson. So because we are live, there's a chat feature that you guys can ask us questions uh, through there as well. I'm going to try to answer them as best as we can. We're going to collectively put three heads together, come up with the best answer possible okay everybody ready everybody game use the chat to your advantage here we go kahai hit me up with a question i'll use his username the black egg the black egg uh and he asked during okay. next week's live lesson could you discuss playing chord inversions using all four strings and the reason why so many players opt for only playing uh, three strings. Mm -hmm. For example, I noticed Audrey plays inversions, leaving the top string open, mm -hmm. even when in keys without a geno. Uh, is it better to play the true four string inversion of chords uh, mm -hmm. for a fatter tone, rather than, than just moving first position chords up the neck? Or uh, is the note too high uh, and simply not needed? Uh, okay, okay, so... Um, the difference between, you know, using all four strings and just, uh, say, the bottom three. Okay, there is, uh, there's gonna be some mixed feelings about that. And for myself, uh, just like he said, the Black Egg said that I, you know, I use pretty much just the, the bottom three. For example, I'm gonna use a G chord shape inversion all the way up here. And I just leave the G string open. So I would play this instead of playing the full chord, which would be this. Instead of... So I always have this kind of open uh, open G when I'm doing a lot of inversion. So maybe doing my E minor inversion, I kind of just keep this open. But he's saying that sometimes, you know, in some keys, the, the G note is not necessarily in there. So for example, if I were to play like an F sharp minor. So this is F sharp minor. This would be F sharp minor over here. And this G just kind of clashes. Okay, so for the most part, I usually take my thumb and place it over like this so that I don't think about whatever's in the top string. And when I strum it, it's just these three. Now the full chord would look like this, which is basically this note. So, because it's just doubling that note, I don't have to, you know, work too hard to get this because if I need to do that, my pinky finger needs to go to that C string, 6th fret, and then ring finger goes up here. I can't do it backwards like this, because this feels the most natural to me. So E minor chord shape, okay? If I'm going to move it up and do this, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be too much for my, you know, for my fingers. And it's not necessarily that much of a difference, or any difference at all, really, because you're playing the same note here. Because it only takes three notes to build a chord, so these three, I only need three notes on three strings in order to simulate a chord. But if I'm going to play uh, a chord with an extension perhaps, so like a, like a minor 7, so instead of you know playing that D minor, I want to play D minor 7, then it's going to be four different notes that I'm going to use. That's when I do exceptions to the rule, okay? So if I'm doing... Uh, chords with chord extensions, that's when I use all four. But I can get away with doing things like this because I have a high G string. So if I am in a key where G is appropriate, I'll just leave it open. So for example, if I have, if I'm the key of B flat, and my B flat is here, I'll leave this open. But if I'm in a key of B, and I'm gonna play a B, I'm not gonna leave that top open i'm gonna have the top muted muted so you mute with your thumb with my thumb up on the top it, in the case that the g is not part of that key correct correct so um 
for me, here, here's a little, you know, here's a little bit of, of you know, of a tip and trick is the, for the most part, um, the chord shapes that I'm using are E minor, G, G minor, and this uh, kind of B flat chord shape, and maybe this E chord shape right here. Those are pretty much the only shapes that, you know, that, that I use up here, unless it's one of those fancy schmancy chords, like I was mentioning with the extension. So, unless you got like, you know, those minor sevens, or perhaps like a minor seven looks like that, or um, or like an add nine, or any of those kind of fancy schmancy sounding chords, that's when you use all four strings. And I want to get the full color of those chords, therefore I'm going to use all four strings. If you have a low G, this is harder to get away with because um, that that high, uh, this high G helps me hide. If I'm going to play, say, a C here and a C here, it's not too bad. Do you guys have a low G here somewhere close by? Mm. Okay, so here is a low G ukulele. And I'm going to try to do the same thing, and I can't really get away with it. And then I play up here. This kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It works, it's, just, it's the right note, but then when I, you know, raise it even further, oh, <laughs> it just seems out of place. It's going to stick out. So if I have a low G, that's when I play the full chord. So it's easier, and I've mentioned this before that the reason why I gravitate towards high G because I'm very strum heavy and um, and as you've already noticed I play a lot of inversions up here and I don't want to be thinking about playing the full chord if I'm you know if I'm using just regular you know like G C minor or, you know or, or those kind of chords right I don't necessarily need four strings to do that I just need three and um, and I can simulate what I'm doing down here up here so if I have something like do the same thing here and then I'm gonna strum a chord I can do the same thing up here and I don't have to change anything except my position on the fretboard the fingerings remain exactly the same, but if I had a high G, I would have to do... See, like, it takes me a second to, like, to get the full bar chord in there, but... I'm so used to just playing that G chord shape that I would down here, so I don't necessarily have to change too much things, and that just... Uh, that's just because I'm lazy, I think I've said that before too, like, <laughs> I play a high G because I'm... Ne Pretty pretty lazy. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to ukulele. And when it comes to playing up here, I don't want to think about this. Okay? I treat this up here as a ghost note for the most part. That is just there. You know, you don't necessarily, you know, you don't necessarily hear it or you, it doesn't make too much of a difference that is distracting. It is, um, you know, it's it's just there. I'm like a ghost. A ghost note. So that's yeah. My take on playing, you know, uh, inversions all the way up there. If, uh, if it's going to be a chord that has the G string in there that's pretty necessary, that's when I change, you know, when I, when I change up my, uh, my playing. If it's going to be an important note, you know, to, uh, to the song. So it just depends on what I'm trying to do or what kind of voicings I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm trying to get. Yeah. And usually with low, if you're playing a low G ukulele, then, mm -hmm that bottom note is or like that that lowest note is an important note yeah so. yeah, yeah so that's so that's, you do have to kind of think you about have to play it, it a yeah, full bar full chord bar. you yeah. know like that kind of those kind of yeah. chords so it's also of, uh hmm? is it um does it have to do with kind of like because you sometimes use your pinky to add melody notes on yes there? yeah because uh if i'm just going to be using three just like i was saying e minor g g minor you know like those uh, very um, common ones, you know, common chord shapes that we use all the way up here allows me to use the pinky finger because if I'm going to play up here, I'm not playing rhythm at that, you know, at that point. I'm going to be playing some sort of melody or I'm doing like a counter, like counter rhythm to whatever the rhythm is doing because if I, if you're playing ukulele and you're playing up here, it's, it's going to sound too you know, too tinny if you're just doing background or like a, a rhythm pattern. Most rhythm patterns are going to be uh, fret five or lower 
Okay, so anything beyond fret 5 is going to be melody driven. You know, if you're doing melody, then you don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to, uh, you know, have to have all those those four kind of notes in there unless the song calls for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and uh all those chords that I'm going to be playing in there because they have melody, I'm going to be using my pinky for a lot of that stuff. So instead of just playing a normal I can add things like That's my pinky finger doing some work. So I already got, you know, my, my thumb up here ready. Now if I were to play C sharp, I have to put that up there. Yeah. Use the thumb to mute. So it looks like I'm just doing this, but I'm actually um, muting the top string so that it doesn't clash. Okay, any, uh, what do you, what do you think, Kai? Uh, I also, I, I, I also noticed mm -hmm. that, uh, you, for a lot of songs, you'll do, like, a picking with that E minor chord shape, mm -hmm. and it'll lead into something else, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, that's, um, I don't know. It's kind of like grace notes. Yeah, it's a grace like, note. Um, um, like a pickup, you know, like a pickup like grace note. So if, if the line goes, um, uh, let's see. So here's, you know, if I'm playing C, for example, it goes. So I can do it. So those are just just grace notes leading to that. So instead of just a plain, you can do. Instead of. But you can overuse that. Like that's. What you know, um, the person who popularized that is is Jake. You know, <laughs> press the button early today. Uh, the person who popularized that is Jake Shimabukuro. Um, in a lot of pure heart, you know, recordings, he does. You know, he does a lot of that. It's especially that. Yeah, he does yeah, that yeah, a lot. Like a hammer. Yeah, pull. hammer. Yeah. That's like kind of his signature sound back in the pure heart days. So. You know, a lot of people kind of heard it and like, oh man, this is how you play that, so I'm gonna do it all the time, or that. Like, and a lot of uh, a lot of uke players will like will abuse that because it looks and sounds fancy, but if your entire like solo consists of nothing but just, it just sounds boring, you know. So be careful of uh, overusing that. I it is. Some I'm not gonna mention names. But a lot of players. <laughs> Who are guilty of this? <laughs> <laughs> it it is kind of telling though that like Jake and then uh, Troy Fernandez mm -hmm. and the like guys who play a reentrant G. Yeah. Like yeah, you see them doing that inversions or mm -hmm. doing the things where they're only really focusing on C E and A. Yeah. And then uh, uh, ukulele players like Otasan mm -hmm. that plays low G, he'll like do more of the full chord. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. And then he'll he'll do more uh, chord stuff like chord based things because he has that like mm -hmm. low G to really hit that yeah. root note yeah so yeah so I mean I do that or you know that's done or, or Jake does it and stuff because it goes from high to to low so that grace don't sounds like how it's supposed to sound or like that pickup it goes but that you know or low low to high yeah low it, to high but you can you can do it you know. It, without doing this E minor chord shape, you can do it in any uh, in any chord shape because it goes low to high on the ukulele. It's just E minor is yeah. easy. <laughs> and then like if yeah, and if you try to do yeah. it with like that full chord shape, it would just yeah. kind of. <laughs> but the said artists, like plural now, <laughs> artists <laughs> that do that, do not realize that like you can do it with other chords. They yeah. just go. They always use the E minor. Band. Yeah, yeah, always yeah. E minor. You, yeah, so many, well, so many guilty, I, so many guilty. But I, I think can't. Uh, it was in Patrick's duels, right? Yeah, <laughs> was it? He did that, or, or I, I think he might have done that, yeah. like with Europa and some stuff. But mm -hmm. like, I think, and then you came in with a uh, diminished chord shape, and yeah. you did kind of the same thing. And he was yeah. like, "What did you just oh, do?" Because so, the so diminished chord shape is what like what Kaka is talking about. It's a diminished chord shape, right? So. If you do an into out picking, then it goes from low to high. So, 
But this note right here, you can play this note. So you can technically go. So you can do. And since diminish, you know, like uh, repeats itself every four times, you can do. Yeah. So there's like different variations that you can do, but <laughs> everyone's guilty of. And <laughs> and Patrick that. saw that and yeah. I was like, what did you just do? <laughs> and then kind of when you explain like, oh, it's just a diminished shape. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're doing like the same thing that I already yeah. know how to do. Yeah. But with just... a different chord. And then he is like, you could Ooh. see the gears like turning Ooh. in his head. And he's like, that was really cool. Like that was a, I think that was a cool moment for us oh, to catch cool. on camera. Cool, cool. And then uh, like he started to go, he asked that question right when yeah. our cameras died. <laughs> and then he he wanted to like keep asking, right? But we're like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait for the camera yeah. to start rolling. <laughs> like we're going to turn the cameras back on and then you can ask your full question. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you do, um, this is the same diminished chord, diminished, uh, re repeats itself every four frets. like doing this that exact thing but just playing the notes oh yeah so for um for people who don't know uh, ukulele duos oh yeah 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 um that was a kind of a series that we ran on ukulele underground plus it was like me and one other person and we jam and we talk story basically we talk about either what we played or like what's going on in each other's you know each other's lives or how you know how a person like kind of approaches you know like uh their their playing style or you know or whatever it's, it's a nice little sit down talk story and jam kind of series so if you guys are interested check out the duos yeah we have how many episodes do we have three four uh i think four we have patrick few... um craig and craig sarah, sarah jason kyle, kyle, kyle and jason yeah uh, and uh, matt and matt okay yeah, yeah. matt so was five, our last yeah. one so yeah so we actually might um kind of integrate some of that if anybody's in town, maybe, yeah. maybe we can just put it into this podcast where, yeah. you know, you guys kind of ask each other questions. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. Yeah. We got a, not a lot of people come to Kauai either. I mean, they do, but we don't, we don't get them here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get them into here. The office. Get them in the studio. Yeah. It, it's a little hard because like you, you just said Andrew was on Kauai, right? Yeah. But he like, was like in and out. Yeah, so, yeah. And that's for a lot of people. Yeah. They come down <laughs> for like just one show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes it's a, if we're lucky, it's like a day, and then yeah. usually it's like, oh, I'm flying from Oahu, so I can just <laughs> fly in for the afternoon and fly back. Yeah, because, um, what you call it? Like, Abe, you know, Abe was here. Abe was here, yeah. too, um, yeah. You know, I, man, we could have done an awesome one with Abe. That would have been amazing. I don't think if I, I would have kept up with what Abe is <laughs> doing. Just watch him the whole time. Just watch it. I'll be the one asking questions, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Abe Legremus, yeah, he was here. Matt, we had Matt when he was when he was down, but Andrew Molina, that's another one we missed out on. Should have had him. Jake sometimes comes down. He was supposed to come down next month. By the way, I know I said like, oh yeah, in June we're gonna be doing a show. Cancel. Long story. <laughs> long, <laughs> long story. They were not. Uh, short story is they were not prepared. They didn't get the permits to uh, to set up this show. Me and Jake were available. We were ready to do it, but they're like, mm, we counted our eggs before they hatched. So, <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so it's too bad. Um, it will be postponed till October, but who knows? I'm not gonna hold my breath anymore for that one. So <laughs> tell me, tell me when you got everything set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's it's uh, it might still happen, but like I said, I'm not gonna hold my breath anymore. But I apologize for everyone who uh, who were making plans or well, you know around around yeah, that show. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. Um, we were, we were just talking about because you were saying how Heather mm -hmm. um was kind of asking you like. Are you are you still excited to watch Jake? Because like, you were you were kind of excited. <laughs> oh, no, um, you cutty. Oh, like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, okay. Was so, it was it? Yeah, okay. So here's here's what Eric is talking about. Um Jake last time Jake came down and uh, I'm like gotta gotta keep hitting the button. Uh, my, my, uh, my laptop is broken. Oh, okay, okay, so okay, that's okay. why I'm like not I, I don't have okay. the extra thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta do it with your mouth. So uh, last time Jake, you know, Jake came down. Um, I was telling Aaron that I was, you know, when when I was watching him, uh, his manager, uh, Hawaii manager, Yukari Takai, I think her last name is, but Yukari, um, you know, was there, and Yukari got, you know, got me and Mike, and you guys know Mike Oto, uh, got us in, and me and Mike were just kind of watching, you know, the master like do his, you know, do his thing, and um, 
And I'm just like, I, every time I watch, I've watched him a million times. I'm like good friends with him and stuff, and and we jam together. But every time I watch him, it's just like. I feel like that that young high school kid, you know, watching the Hot Hawaiian Nights video like over and over again. I'm always inspired, you know. I'm like, oh man, like that voice that he did there. Even though I know exactly what he's doing now, it's like one of those things. Like, oh man, that sound is so sweet. He hit it just right. Mm -hmm. He, you know, his tone was on it. His, uh, you know, everything was everything was perfect. Basically, he's he's like like a master. You know, he's watching a master at play, and uh, I'm just like in awe, and I'm like clapping and I'm like hollering and stuff because I'm I'm into it. You know, like I'm I'm a mark. For for those of you who uh, who are wrestling fans, I'm a mark for Jake. <laughs> and uh, um, then Yukari, you know, and we're, we're me and Yukari are friends too. Yukari's like, how many times have you seen Jake? Or like, oh, how are you still excited to like to see Jake? Because mm -hmm. I guess for her, it's like I see Jake all the time, and I'm like, you know, I'm like maybe <laughs> if I go on tour with Jake or whatever. But even <laughs> yeah. then, I think because I just I love the Yuke so much that like watching somebody who's really figured it out, who's you know who's at the top of their game, who's really figured out the craft and is an artist, you know, a true artist. Because you got players, you got musicians, and you got artists. And artists who, you know, it's like watching, if you could watch, like, and this is what I told you, Kai, if you could watch Leonardo da Vinci paint a painting, you've seen many, many da Vinci's, you know, before, but if you can watch him paint, would you not want to watch him paint? And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes, you know, that makes sense. It's exactly, you know, it's actually what I mean, and I still feel excited i'm uh, i'm getting excited right now just talking yeah. about it you know it's yeah. like and i'm I, very I, passionate about that stuff it's i awesome. think it it has to do with the fact that you mm. do know so much about it yeah that maybe. your your appreciation is higher it's mm. kind of like you know if you're a painter yeah. and you watch da vinci paint yeah like you could you could see like the techniques that mm -hmm. he's using you could you would understand like why he's using certain uh. pigments you know <laughs> And, it, and and your appreciation is just so much higher than mm. a, an average person is just seeing somebody paint like oh right. this this guy's painting and that guy's <laughs> painting like oh they're mm. both painting pretty well mm -hmm. like you know but just having that that I like I don't know we were kind of talking about the same thing with photography too right mm. like you can um once you get to a certain you level appreciate it more, yeah you yeah. yeah you you can see someone who is just an amateur photographer and yeah. somebody who is a professional photographer yeah, yeah. and like you know you can't really put your your finger on exactly why mm. but you know one one is definitely better yeah. and it's yeah. because you know the level is much higher yeah, yeah. they they know their stuff <laughs> yeah. i i saw a music teacher like uh he made a video and one of the questions was um should i like should i learn music theory because i'm afraid if i learn theory I'm going to lo lose the spark of music. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to learn lose mm -hmm. the magic mm -hmm. that is music of like the unknown of like why things sound good together or not, yeah. right? And he said like there is kind of that like you can never gain back, you know, like when you mm -hmm. learn how something is done, you can never gain back not knowing mm -hmm. and just seeing something and being like, mm -hmm. "Wow, that is amazing." Just, yeah. Amazed, yeah. For what it is. Mm -hmm. But then he said you also grasp the understanding mm -hmm. of like that extra step where it's like yeah. now you can understand even more things yeah. beyond yeah. it. And you he he was like saying, "I I still get amazed when I hear something and I'm like, oh, that is that is so <laughs> like I know exactly the mechanics it, that mm -hmm. music theory wise goes into it." Mm -hmm. But it still like amazes yeah. me. It's yeah. either amazing that somebody would think to do that yeah. even or like is able to pull it off with a musical mm -hmm. instrument or, you know. Because like you, you would think like oh, that's not supposed to work, yeah. but they somehow, but somehow they did. Made it made it work. And, yeah. and that only comes with that understanding. Mm -hmm. Like to anybody else, they're just hearing music and yeah. like, oh, that sounded like, cool. Sounds good. I, that yeah, sounded sounds cool. Good. But like. For musicians who know, it, yeah. it's like you, you can like really geek out <laughs> on things like, wow, like how did Kalei <laughs> think to put that together? Mm -hmm. Or like, how like, did he even make that noise with his <laughs> ukulele? Like, like when we, we go to Nam mm -hmm. and every once in a while, like all these different players will be playing at different boots mm -hmm. and you can just see like people stop and stare. Yeah. And there's some people who are like, they stop because like, you know, they see the crowd or they hear something and it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it's they're not like, you know, mesmerized or they, they're just like, oh, this I just happened to be passing by yeah. and it was nice. And then you can kind of see like where there's other players 
other you know if it's like a bass player who's like going nuts and then there's other bass players who mm-hmm. with their jaws hanging mm-hmm. down and are just like <laughs> I, what yeah. yeah that is amazing that's a whole new level yeah, for that's me. a deeper understanding you know when when you uh when you un- when you understand what they're doing when you know like music theory and what you know puts those things together like i listen to um i used to listen to Jimi hendrix all the time back you know back when i was like when i was a young like guitar like wannabe you know electric guitar player and stuff but now like i have a I have a better understanding of music theory and i just realized like how messed up like these you know these chords and chord patterns like, <laughs> like how, how did he make how did that he... fit like yeah. oh my god like it goes from c to g to d to a and to e7 but he's playing in an e7 the entire time but it's mm-hmm. like I, why does that even work heck? how does that it's like yeah. to go c and then the fifth of the c with the G and then it goes to the fifth and then it goes to the fifth and then it goes to the fifth. Mm-hmm. I was back to see. It's like how the heck? This yeah. is a uh, Hey Joe by um yeah. by Jimi Hendrix and it's, it's amazing. What about you, Kai? Like, let's, let's go back to <laughs> well, <I was laughs> like just... dorky. Um, you now know how to do magic. Yeah. Do you still watch magicians even yeah. though you know that like I know how to do that? But like, do you have a different appreciation? You know for. Or do you still do yeah. you still see yourself like do you still have the magic in you the twinkle in your eye when you watch magicians? <laughs> well, there's there's like, so I think a lot of magicians they they learn magic. I guess there's two camps to it. There's like Penn and Teller, right? Uh-huh. They a lot of their tricks that they do they explain how they do it yeah. in the, like how they actually do the trick, and that's part of like their show is like that you're like, oh my gosh, that's like so technical. Like they do the cups and balls routine mm-hmm. with clear plastic cups, uh, and you're still like, "That's amazing!" But amazed, yeah. they, they like, transform. I know how it happens, but yeah, they 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 still like ended up palming a, a potato and putting it into a plastic <laughs> yeah. cup when I wasn't paying attention, and they're explaining the whole trick, and it's it's you do get a, and I think a teller he said that he went to India or mm. Egypt. And he went to like uh, street magicians, and the street magician did the cups and balls. And so it, the regular cups and balls, you like pick one a cup, and then they open it up, and they're like, "It's not there. Where did it go?" <laughs> right? And so Teller was like, "Oh, okay, I know how it's gonna go, but I'm gonna play along because mm. you know, just to be nice." Yeah. And he pointed to the the cup, and the magician was like, "Nope, it's still there. The ball is still there." And yeah. Teller was like freaking out. He's yeah. like. <laughs> To, to oh, anybody yeah. else, oh my gosh. nothing happened. Like to, <laughs> yeah. to, to any other bystander, like yeah. nothing really happened. Like, oh, this guy like, is a him, bad yeah. magician. Yeah, yeah. But, but Teller, for him, since, since he knew, he was like, he not only stole the ball, <laughs> he put it back yeah. because he knew what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. he's like, oh my god. So oh, there's that's cool. there's different <laughs> levels of uh, yeah. presentation. Yeah, exactly. You know, like some you know some people. Let's going back. You know, going back to Jake. A lot of people will just, you know, will, will watch the hand, like the right hand doing, you know, doing this thing. But then, like, it's this, you know, with this, and, like, what kind chords he's playing. combination. Exactly. And then, like, sometimes he'll, like, you know, he'll do, like, a melody line and he'll do, like, a quick, maybe, like, a pickup note with, you know, with that. And it goes back to, you know, like, do something that, like, that crazy where, like, um, just that tiny thing, you could, you know, you could miss it if you, you know, if you blink. But it's like, oh. Like how he added that, like that ninth or that eleventh or flat thirteenth or whatever, you know. It's it's those things that like make make me giddy still. Like oh man, yeah, yeah. oh I, I, I didn't think of that, and I always yeah. I always tell myself that like oh man, how, why didn't I think of that? You know? <laughs> there was like, I, there was one. Um, well, I we might have mentioned this on the podcast before, but we were filming with Imua. Mm-hmm. and both you and Kalei were on <laughs> yeah. set when we were filming with him, yeah. and it. Both of you, you and Kalei, are you know really high level, high level players. players. Well, you're, and, you're professionals. Yeah, and you both of you asked Imua about the same thing what because you you both of you didn't understand how he did a certain thing. Do you remember what it was that he was talking um, about, or or that you asked him? It was uh, he did like like harmonics, mm-hmm. but then he did it like as if he's doing. Because oh. usually, if you do harmonics, it's... Uh-huh. But then he did it like... Oh! Uh, so he did it like that one. Oh, he used his thumb 
to to do what my pointer finger is doing, and then he rolled this. Uh, so so you it's heard it? Like, huh? you, you heard it on an album or something? You heard it on an album. Um, Imua has an album called Dream Speaking, and uh, the I forgot which song it was. It's like um, something about a cat. So, something about oh. a cat. I forget. Like um, <laughs> something with a cat nip. I don't know. Uh, yeah, to look it up. It's if you listen to that song, there's like a there's a now, I think it's like a two second, three second line that like me and Kalei still talk about it like to this day. We're like, man, that so, line that Imua did in that song. So you, um, oh, Jinxie finds the catnip. Yeah, Jinxie finds the catnip. Is that the, song. Is the song. Oh my goodness. So so both of you guys were in, mm-hmm. like, we, we we're kind of taking a break from yeah. filming. And both of you guys had the same question independently. Yeah. <laughs> because you both didn't understand how he did this one yeah. thing. And that's kind of like... That's a level of musicianship where, like, you know, if you can kind of was... amaze people <laughs> who know music, mm. that's that's pretty, yeah. That's... And that was the thing. I wasn't about to, like, miss that opportunity to ask. Like, to ask Gars him. was yeah. right there in front of me. I'm yeah. like, it's, it's now or never. There's one technique I can't seem to figure out, like, what that he's you doing. Did. Yeah. And he kind of showed me in Kalea that it's like, oh, it's this. You use your thumb to kind of do the, uh, do the harmonic so that you can use this. Because if you're using your pointer finger... You it's only like have the thumb to one it, string, to do that one, one string. Yeah, one no. note, one string. It's less accurate, but that's what makes Imogars good. Uh-huh. It's like he can do this, but accurately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man, can't, that's amazing. So. Yeah, yeah. So see, that's that's kind of the mm. where where it's at. Where like you know how it's done. Yeah. But the fact that he can do it is <laughs> still amazing. You know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the yeah. audio listeners. You can't really see what Aldrin is doing. But so he... let's see if I can do it like slow. So he's using his thumb for what I normally use my corner finger for. So. Yeah. That. Oh, I mean, I'm plugged in, so I should hear. Yeah, but he's he's getting like a clean harmonic. There it is. Out of I don't I don't even know how to explain. So you can even do like um like do that. He was yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so he was no yeah. no. Yeah. But getting but harmonics yeah, on, on all of it clean. on all of the strings. Like, what the heck? Listen to Jinxie finds a cat. It's like ah, what what is that? <laughs> yeah, that, I get excited talking about it. like, oh man, people are so good. That's that's kind of the thing I like about Umua too is he can do like crazy stuff like that, and then he make <laughs> he remakes Chandelier. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He also does he's, stuff uh, like that where it's like, oh man, it's Umua is great. He just like does whatever. Yeah, yeah. he's fun. probably the most underrated ukulele yeah. player. Most unknown, I think, like outside yeah. of Hawaii, like nobody really knows who Imo Gars is. Yeah, and that's the thing, like people miss out on like an amazing musician. I, I think even now, like mm-hmm. if people know about Imua, they mm-hmm. might know him from High Sessions, mm-hmm. but he's playing guitar on High Sessions, so yeah. it's not even like honestly, like, you player. Oh, it's yeah, OP yeah, figures. He's he's like our age, like, me and Aaron's yep. age, and he's they when didn't... we were a senior in high school. Like he already released his second album, which was the beginnings op pickers album he released his first when he was like 15 13 something like that with a uh, fresh off the rocks op pickers actually no he was he was on a compilation album before yeah, that and he played uh uh stars and stripes forever yeah 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 i was talking oh. it was a like full album it was yeah, like yeah. Was him, yeah he was he was on a roy takuma i think <coughs> compilation <coughs> album mm. because he was so good as a kid <laughs> He's really good. It's so ridiculous. Good. Yeah, I have that album, and I, I don't think I ever knew who did it. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you played, like, you played, uh, you played Jake's, Jake's kind of version, right? Stripes, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I, like, I had to go, like, was that, but was that Moose or Jake's? <laughs> like, because I know both, and it's like both are yeah. pretty great. It starts off with that. Um, He does this like finger picking thing. Oh. It sounds nothing like what he did, but as tech, he was in that key at least. <laughs> yeah. When, when, he, yeah. did it. when but, he was like 10 years old. Yeah, or something so like that. good. It's so good. I, 
I, I think you told me, Aaron, right? Or like you, I don't know if you guys were talking with him and he just said like, I would just like lock myself in my room and just practice like every mm-hmm. single day or mm-hmm. something. That was me. That's like most, most yeah. people, most um, ukulele players who are mm-hmm. professional now. <laughs> yeah, Kale, I think Kale's story was like he, because he used to play baseball. Mm-hmm. He got injured, like, um, and I think due to his injury, he couldn't really do anything. He had to stop playing baseball, mm-hmm. so he picked up the ukulele and learned that instead. Like, uh, all the effort that he would he would have put, in, yeah. you know, into doing baseball, did ukulele instead, which is was the best thing he ever did in his life, I think. <laughs> yeah, there is a a magician who said he was riding his bike, mm. and he like flew off the front and broke both of his arms. <laughs> So, like, as physical therapy, the therapist said, like, oh, why don't you try magic? Because it's with your hands. So, mm-hmm. you'll move your hands. And he did that. And then he was like, oh, yeah, I'll just keep doing this. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I really like this. This yeah. is fun. Isn't it, I think that's Jack Johnson's backstory, too. Really? Like, he got injured somehow and <laughs> picked up guitar. a guitar. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, that's Kalei's backstory. And I... I'm like big fans of like a bunch of my friends. Just, like, yeah. <laughs> just ukulele in general. Yeah. yeah. I, I love, you know, I love everything uke. Like, um, I remember when we visited, when I visited the, uh, like Europe you know, and the UK for like the first time and saw like those players and what they're doing with the ukulele, it was like, it was like falling in love with the ukulele all over again because it's a totally new style. I'm like, what is this? There's that business. It's like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't I do like, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think you you used the analogy before. It's like you get your belt dirty, right? Yeah, and then yeah. it just you get a new like you have to wash it off wash, and it becomes yeah. a white belt again. And yeah. Like yeah. when there there's people who come into U plus and they say, uh, I just I just wanna kinda like learn to strum and mm. sing some songs and do some stuff. I'm thinking like Okay, like yeah, you <laughs> yeah. can do that, but like, <laughs> let's see if you still like just just want to strum, you know? Yeah, once in, you get a taste, for, yeah, like, what the what is possible? Like, can really do, yeah. yeah. Like I think a lot of people like they just they'll they might learn like a little picking, and then they're like, oh, like I kind of want to learn more <laughs> of this. <laughs> as and, a as an educator and as a teacher, my main goal with the ukulele now, like back then, I was like, I want to be a master of whatever. Like now. I want to be a jack of all trades. Like I want to just be able to know how to do something. Not necessarily be good, you know, at doing something. Or the wanna, best. Yeah, or the best at doing something. I want to just understand something enough that I can teach it to you folks. And um, it's pretty cool that I've, you know, that I've gone through all these like travels and stuff, and just kind of seeing what's out there and like and what people are doing now, so that I can kind of absorb what's possible, you know, with the ukulele and. And every corner of the world that we've been uh, we've been to, there's like always something different. Like we went to New York, and there was a guy who's doing like the uh, like a more percussive technique with the ukulele. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like seeing uh, just people in in like in the mainland, what we call the mainland, you know, mainland U.S. Uh, as compared to here in Hawaii and stuff, and how you know they take the ukulele and just kind of do this singer songwriter you know thing with it, and or just the clubs here in Hawaii, like ukulele clubs is not a thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then in the mainland, so it's like a totally different appreciation for the uke and totally different approach to it because you're just playing with others. And when it, whenever it's here, you know, it's being done here in in, in Hawaii, it's usually like a two hundred piece band by Roy Sakuma that like plays together, you know, and they're like like robots about it. But then you know we go to the mainland and we see people having fun, you know, like in in a, in a group of say fifty, a hundred people like in the club and they're just ecstatic about stuff. It's awesome. There, there is definitely like a a Hawaiian or like a, a local way of strumming to mm-hmm. strumming and rhythm that if you hear, it's kind of like, oh yeah, that person probably learned in Hawaii or they're from Hawaii or something. And then when we go to the mainland, I hear people strumming. And I'm like, you didn't learn. Like, what are you <laughs> doing? Like, what? Why are you strumming like that? And it's not a bad thing. It's just mm-hmm. that I get like, and the same thing with what you said with Europe too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just like such there's little things where it's just like you guys didn't learn the same way that I did. And mm-hmm. it's kind of it kind of trips up my mind where mm-hmm. I I can't really understand. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Like I want to learn. But yeah, it's just it, I think it has to be like the environment or something where just even though it's the same instrument, the paths yeah. trade. Yeah, I mean, just like chunks alone, you know, like a chunk 
it is like a like a Hawaii thing. Like that's something that you learn like at the beach, like from some uncle, like with mm-hmm. a ukulele, you mm-hmm. know, after Art. he's done surfing or whatever. You know, that's something that you learn from from and, that. And yeah. they wouldn't even call it like a chunk. They just go yeah, like, like, oh yeah, you just make the school it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you make that sound. It's basically, yeah. We there's no drummer, so we yeah. just got to be the drummer too. Right. <laughs> chunk. You have to play chunk. play music and be the drummer. Uh, <laughs> like I I think a lot of uh, local guitarists they learn finger picking right mm-hmm. like instead of using flat picks mm-hmm. and that's just because no bass player so yeah. you gotta play the guitar and you play the bass line with the <laughs> mm-hmm. low strings too so yep. mm-hmm. that was i was watching a a bass uh player and he teaches bass and he's saying how to play bass if you're a guitarist and he mm-hmm. said like Oh, don't use a pick. Use your fingers. Like that's a dead giveaway. If you're a guitarist, yeah. <laughs> if you're playing bass with a pick, like it's you're probably a guitarist to move to bass. Like, but Mark I thought Hoppus, yeah, Blink One Eight Two. But I, I was like, like, ah, oh, that's no problem. Like I use my fingers all the time. <laughs> like, I can do that. Yeah. Um, my favorite guitar player turned bass, Paul McCartney. Listen to those like oh, yeah. early like Beatles tunes and listen to his bass lines. Like that's the song I always go to. Something by the Beatles, you know, like mm-hmm. something in the way she moves. If you listen to that bass line, that's like that's that's interesting. Like a, it's a guitar player playing bass. Uh-huh. It's it's very melodic, I, and that's one of the things that like that attracts me to to uh, to the Beatles music. And same, that's going back to the same thing. Like um, you know, I I appreciated the uh, Beatles music back in the day where I didn't know anything about music. You know, where it's like it just sounds like a theory. great song. But now that I know theory. And I know, you know, what bass players are supposed to do. And then here's what Paul McCartney is doing. And it's like, that is super awesome. <laughs> like, it's yeah, so new, good. Yeah, new appreciation. Exactly. For the new same, level same of songs that, like, that I used to listen to back in the day. And it's yeah. like, wow, that's, he is, I would love to learn that bass line, you know. And here I am thinking. And back back then, I used to do bass lines just like. Mm-hmm. I thought that was bass lines, you know, just like, just play the. The, the root note and, yeah. and you know and that's it but then you know McCartney kind of took it to that level and you know I know I'm singling him out and there's a bunch of great uh, you know other great basses out there but for me that was like a big revelation because I used you know I used to enjoy the tunes a certain way and now I enjoy them in a totally different way because not just McCartney like all all of them were like really amazing and uh I know Ringo gets a lot of like you know gets a lot of slack, wow. <laughs> yeah, for, my, for not being good. But you listen to something like "Happiness Is a Warm Gun," where like they go from like four four to three four to like you know like mm-hmm. six. Eight. It's amazing. Yeah, like, how like that mother superior jumped the gun. It's like totally different and he was, from. She was like, right on it. Exactly, on the it's changes. That. happiness is a warm gun it's like totally different beats and stuff and it's a totally different time signature so as a as a drummer you got to be there for that and it's that ring off i'm i'm a fan (laughs) (laughs) i don't care what anybody else says you know that that's those those things and like we talk about like eric clapton too Mm -hmm. i think he's another one where it's like those techniques or those things that they do it's it's even things that like advanced jazz theorists yeah like they don't like learn until like later on and then they're mm-hmm. like what the heck why <laughs> why are you doing it this way there's um a great interview between uh this musician jacob collier and uh this guy who like he transposes his music so he like takes his music because it's like so complicated and he makes sheet music out of mm-hmm. it um, and he asked him like a question, like, why did you do this? And Jacob Collier was like, um, I could tell you it's to get to like the four or five and then to resolve. But in reality, I just did it because it sounded good. Yeah. Like I just, I make chords. I do things because emotionally I feel like that's, it's mm-hmm. good. And then that it, it becomes complicated, but it really doesn't need to be. It can be just distilled to that's what yeah. I as like long as do. it makes you know makes sense, like I, that's that's the kind of music I like where it has purpose. You know, like you do this because you want to invoke this kind of emotion, or like mm-hmm. this is what this you know the story of the song is trying to tell, and then it resolves to the one, like the four. You know, it's like going from four and five to the one, but then you know when when he goes like I could tell you that that that's the reason why, but you know, but this is but the the real reason is actually a lot deeper than that. Like this yeah. invokes a certain thing. And I think we talked about it when you brought up one of my tunes and stuff. 
when I was like, oh, why did you, you know, I don't know what song it was, but like, why did you do this or whatever in this song? And I'm like, yeah. well, you know, it it just sounds cool. But honestly, this is why, you know, I wanted to do this and wanted the audience to kind of picture this in their heads. You know, I, I forget what song. It was a solo. It was one of your original solos. Mm. And um, I remember, I forget what song it was, but I remember that I asked why you picked these rhythms because it all added up mm. to getting back to the one. Mm. And sometimes like when you make music, mm-hmm. especially rhythms, like it doesn't evenly, you know, add up. Mm. It like it, it, it that's where like for me, at least when I, I write out tabs and I do stuff like that, it gets kind of hard because you're like, it's kind of like he's kind of doing a triplet but then that last beat is like a little bit laggy Mm -hmm. you know so it's not really a triplet Mm -hmm. or like you get into finer details where it's like you can kind of get close enough but you can't get exactly what a uh, musician does but then for that one song in particular i was like this all of this like i transcribed it it all (laughs) adds up and it's all even and it all makes sense so that's why i was like did you intentionally do that? Or yeah, because sometimes just... you just got to throw out the rule book. It's like this. I don't care what, you know, <laughs> what the, like if it has to go one, two, three, four, or whatever. And like, as long as it makes sense, let's just throw that rule book away. Like, this is what I want to, you know, this is what I want it to sound like. These are the emotions that I'm trying to invoke. And this is what I want, the uh, you know, the instrument to to say, you know, really is what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. And, um, and if it lines up, then great. If it doesn't, it still sounds great, you know? Yeah, I was watching a, a video on irrational time signatures. Mm. And so, like, stuff like that, it goes like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Oh. Like, it, it goes, it keeps going back. Mm. And the guy said, like, I wanted it to feel like every time you, you go back, you're mm. expecting more, but mm. it cuts off short. Mm. So you mm. have that feeling of like trepidation. And that's where I think, like, good songwriters they know a feeling they want to invoke mm-hmm. and then they're like oh yeah you know it whether it be like consciously or subconsciously mm-hmm. they can pull from their bag of tricks like yeah. oh i could use this to make it sound mm-hmm. to try and invoke this more a great uh ukulele example of you know bringing back to the you a great ukulele example of that is uh listen to jake's song trapped and i think mm. that's like in a very irregular like uh um Time signature. Uh, time signature, yeah. So look, and it which would like, make sense, which yeah, because the song's called Trap, yeah, and you know yeah. it, it'll invoke that feeling that you're being trapped. And don't ask me to play it because <laughs> I I can't. It's a very like it's a tricky song and it's like um a weird time signature. And he like when he showed it to me, he's like he, he counted it out loud and it made sense. And I'm like I'm never gonna remember that. <laughs> so it's like, I'm never gonna remember that. Yeah. He even does things like with uh, with while my guitar gently weeps, you know, like he he'll kind of play around with it you know every now and then he'll he'll change it up when he plays because a regular like right but he goes so it's like it's cut like Mm -hmm. instead of doing holding it for the regular cutting it to two instead of like you know letting it go for that three four and then coming back in it's like one two one two one two three mm-hmm. four it's like and, yeah and that, that makes sense because that part of the song is a build-up right yeah. so it kind of feels like oh he's like building momentum yeah, he's yeah. getting like <laughs> he's pushing forward the first time i um i noticed like you know when when people cut things like that is uh it is not that long ago. It, uh, it was a song, Hey Ya. Uh, is it by Outkast? Yeah. <laughs> hey Ya. Uh. That's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. hey, hey, uh. Like the hey, hey is one, there. two, one, two, three, four. Well, like, uh, I think Andre 3000 yeah. is like known for doing, uh, it's called over, is it called over the line raps, Aaron? Or, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Cause, or crossing the crossing, line. Crossing the, the bar line. Because he'll, he'll rap something and it'll end like, you know, it'll be a word mm-hmm. that starts on beat four and mm-hmm. then continues to beat one. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of connecting the, mm-hmm. the two lines together by cool. just crossing over to mm-hmm. that next section. 
yeah. that's that's like something that's why like people who are like oh rap is so so generic <laughs> and it's it's so it's complicated like, yeah, it, yeah you can it's the same thing as jazz you can get really into it where it's yeah. like these guys who are doing it they're doing pretty <laughs> crazy stuff to be fair some people say the same thing about jazz too <laughs> there's like yeah. that yeah that uh the joke in the office where like angela's like jazz is stupid why don't they just play the, the just the play right the right notes, notes. <laughs> yeah. just yeah. play the right notes yeah. Yeah. oh man i love it <laughs> <laughs> and as a musician i'm like that is that's funny not true it's funny <laughs> it's like, i get, get why <laughs> well like it, it's i think it's yeah it's that level of musicianship right where you wipe your your belt and it's white yeah and you're like, well, I was kind of bored. Like, yeah. why would I? I don't want to keep playing in four four. <laughs> I want to play in five four, or I want to play in you know nine four or something like that's. Or I j- I just want to try this, and then that's where it's like weird things come out. But mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> yeah, it's an experiment. It's trying something different. It, there's a um, there's a song in my album called Escape on Sugar, which is supposed to be a uh, you know like his uh, Bandito Tyler's horse, right? And then in right in the middle of it, like, because it goes out, where it sounds like, you know, like a lone ranger, like his galloping, you know, his, galloping right? Yeah. And then it like goes into a 2-4 um, because uh, Ariki, the, the drummer, he'll start doing this cadence with the, with the drums. That's when it gets to 1-2. Mm-hmm. goes to like a like a march so instead of it being a gallop it turns into a march goes back to being gallop so it's like it's like i've we uh the the, the horse that like, kind of ran away enough that like we're we're gonna show off a little bit like you know we're trotting it's mm-hmm. like oh it's like a, it's like a march the you know the horse just kind of marches like haha we got away and then you know like and then it, it goes back again it's like it just shows the uh like the the arrogance of like bandito tyler and his horse sugar yeah <laughs> that and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a song right where it's like you play that part and you kind of break off and you let Ariki like yeah, play the, that the, drum solo because that's what it's supposed to feel. It's like the the march, so the <laughs> drums kind of take over because like it turns into a march. Like if, it's it's like arrogance. That's what I want. To do. It's like arrogance of like ha ha, you know, like yeah, we got away. We got away. <laughs> well, we if you foiled if you, them, if you played in marching band or if you went to a parade, usually the the drum line mm-hmm. will do like the dun 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. and it kind of like it gets you started for the actual mm. song and they'll repeat that a couple times so it, mm. it makes sense for like that break and then it's kind of like oh okay so that that break here's a here's an easter egg that break that drum solo which is uh this on snare yeah because it's you know, i wanted to want yeah. to sound like a marching drum line that solo or breakdown is from bridge street march which is a uh, level one seventh grade uh, <laughs> band song because <laughs> like, uh, i wanted it to be really you know really basic because i wanted him mm-hmm. to just do like one two one two like a march you know like a, let's do bridge street march solo right there on this like uh, uh escape on sugar yeah check it out if you guys haven't checked out uh that song or that album that's most of like my creative juices were on that album like i I really worked hard on that one (laughs) uh we're almost at time okay Uh, one more question yeah we did have a question okay john asked uh you mentioned that for the purpose purpose of strumming Mm -hmm. uh when you're recording that you like to use soprano ukulele can you briefly discuss that okay so um when i'm uh, i'm doing rhythm patterns with the ukulele uh, I like to use uh, soprano, you know, soprano uke. So, soprano uke here, right there. You gonna pass me that? One. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, so the reason for that is the soprano uke. Uh, <laughs> soprano uke is uh, is gonna have the most like ukulele sound. Now, I don't know how do I explain this. Um, it's it's what you hear. You know when you when you think ukulele and somebody strums. Um, you know, somebody who's never heard of, of ukuleles before or have heard a professional ukulele album. If you're going to strum with your tenor ukulele... Someone might say, it, okay, I guess that sounds like a ukulele. But when you hear it with a soprano... Oh, oh it's probably going to fall again. It's like no, you know, like there's no there's, doubt in your yeah. mind that that is an ukulele sound. 
So uh, I learned that trick from Dr. Trey. So we, I, I recorded with Dr. Trey on my second album called I'm a Dreamer. And that trick we used to uh, to get like the most ukulele sound, you know, into the album because it is an ukulele album. So to get that kind of sound using sopranos, and the one that I use is a um, is a soprano, uh, Joel Souza's personal soprano is what we use for that. It sounded so good. I wanted to steal that uke from his house because <laughs> I stayed with him. Uh, he's like ten minutes away from Trey Studio, so I stayed with the Souzas, and uh, I remember seeing it. I'm like. Joe, could I borrow that uke? And I played it. I'm like, man, that sounds so good. <laughs> Is that a that's a uke that Joe built too? Yeah, it was, it's a Lonnie Kai. The one he used to, because oh, Joe used yeah. to work for Lonnie Kai, but he was making like, um, like well, oh, here we go, like mm-hmm. well built Lonnie Kai's, like as if it's like Hawaii kind of, you know, Hawaii built Lonnie Kai's. Yeah, and um, uh, I guess not a lot of people, yeah, not a lot of people knew that. So that was one of his, you know, one of his personal ones, and um, which is why he gifted me a super soprano so you guys have seen my super soprano Connie Leo before it's because I asked him like Joe you gotta make me an ukulele that's like that has this kind of sound in it because you know I'm gonna be doing some recordings and whenever I do a recording I want that same exact sound and um and he's like okay so he built me that super soprano and um I recently recorded at C major 7 studios with Noel Cronin and um, and I did the same exact trick, you know. I played that super soprano, and Noah's like, man, that's like the best sounding like uh, ukulele like rhythm track I've ever heard, you know. And, and he used to play with Kolohe Kai, and he you know he worked with Imua Garza because Imua Garza played uke for the Kolohe Kai albums. He's like, that's a great you know tone for uh, for rhythm. And I'm like, Doctor Trey, <laughs> yeah, well, thank yeah. You, Dr. Well, because because if you're on it's audio, yeah. So they like your audience has no other point of reference. Mm-hmm. They need to immediately know <laughs> this, that yeah, you know what ukulele. what instrument that is. Yeah, and it, it kind of gives you know like a, a certain charm to it too because mm-hmm. the, the tenor ukulele it sounds like a serious instrument. So I use my tenor for like for picking you know, or if I'm doing like a lot of that you know like uh, melody strumming like Bandito Tyler or something, then I'll use my tenor ukulele because it needs to be up front and center as the melody line. So I'm going to use a big sounding ukulele for that. But if I'm just doing rhythm and I'm just like playing, I'm going to play that on my soprano so that when my uh, when I do the picking with my tenor, there's going to be this contrast of small and big sound and uh, that it, it makes like the recording the, the spectrum of, of the sounds in the recording that much more because you have big sounds little sounds even though they're playing the same uh the same chord and the same uh what do we call uh octave it still sounds different yeah i like because you could you could put a capo on the fifth fret of like a nylon string guitar uh-huh. and it could get pretty close to sounding like a tenor like, yeah but it's not yeah but it's not it, it's, it's too big yeah, and like, but like that tone, mm-hmm. like that tone is vastly different from mm-hmm, a soprano, mm-hmm. right? Where yeah. it's like you really can't mix the two up. Mm-hmm. Whereas like you, there, there have been like mm, bands or other other music that I've mm-hmm. heard where it's like I'm not really sure if they really are using a ukulele mm-hmm. or they're just using a capo yeah, on a guitar. A guitar. So uh, a great example of that from that album, from the I'm a Dreamer album, for those of you folks who have it. Is a song called "Only Mine," which is a song I wrote for my wife, and um, it's there's no there's no guitar on it. I think it's just like so, that soprano yeah. ukulele that, and so you can hear you know like you can hear exactly the the sound that I I you know that I like. So it's not covered by guitar, or bass, or whatever. It's just drums, uke, and and like and we made an electric bass sound like an upright bass, which is mm-hmm. really cool. What, what Trey did. So the rhythm pattern strictly ukulele for that song. Check it out. It's called "Only Mine." on I, that album yeah i laugh because i just uh i just made music for only mine like made oh, yeah? the sheet music oh cool so it, i oh, don't yeah, know we did that as a lesson yeah yeah and it's oh, kind of yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a old we're, we're still going back through the old lessons and making music so if you guys mm-hmm. have learned that song or you wanted to learn mm-hmm. that song and you guys need sheet music and you guys might want to check it out now yeah yeah so this is the original the original's got you know like some amazing sounding uh like soprano ukulele rhythms in there it's it's really cool and i think because i liked it so much i even did the picking with the soprano and it just like it, it had this charm that i couldn't get if i played the same exact way on my tenor mm-hmm. it was really cool so it's a little easter egg <laughs> 
But cool, so uh, that's gonna be it for Thursday Live Lessons. Um, this is a, you know, a little bit longer Thursday Live Lesson because we uh, we started a little bit late, so sorry <laughs> and about- And we totally missed yeah. last week. And we totally missed last <laughs> week, sorry about that, but I am back. I'm not 100%, you know, back it. I'm still a little congested, but hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm doing the lessons, we're doing the talking and stuff. It's gonna be great. Stay, uh, stick around for Songs Made Easy. We're going to be doing I'm Yours today in C, so stick around for that. Afterwards, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching, so make sure to take advantage. It's, uh, it's basically if you need anything, anything at all, any kind of help with the ukulele, jump on. I'm gonna be on there. I'm gonna see you on video. You can see me on video. I'm gonna help you out. Get unstuck, okay? For those of you folks who are listening to the podcast, sign up for UU Plus where you can watch today's um, you know today's podcast as a video so you know um when i'm showing those complicated chords or showing the uh you know like that that emu garza <laughs> trick that you know that i was doing you can see all these videos go to ukuleleontheground.com and sign up for uu plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level and now uh, we have some amazing stuff on there and we have a lot of cool stuff coming up we're going to be doing private lessons on uu plus so uh you know if you guys thought that one-on-one -on -one coaching was kind of a private lesson it's it's going to get even more private than that Okay, so <laughs> it's gonna be really one on one and not just like one on one in a group. It's gonna be like private ukulele lessons. So if you haven't signed up for uh, UU Plus yet, what are you waiting for? Sign up for UU Plus. On behalf of myself, Aaron, and Kahai, we'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Aloha.